All right, I, I haven't got time to mark this motherfucker. Here we go again. We can't hear anybody. Nobody can talk to anybody. You guessed it, Pressure Points, with your two favorite hosts. I'm D, and this is my poop cutter, AJ. We're coming at you as Season 5, Episode 8, Smalls and the Planter Escape. We're going to be talking about one of the greatest heists of the 1860s. And AJ will clarify on his newly acquired status. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at Points of Pressure. Well, turn the fucking thing off, you dumbass. You almost <laughs> fit it all in. <laughs> no, almost. it's because I dragged my feet uh, when I was talking about the heist. That's okay. Hey, you know what? If I can, I can count on two things in life, and that's a, you're going to do an episode on survival or heists. I like them. Every episode is one of those two things, which is fine. I don't something, mind. I think they're great. Something saved or something stolen. <sighs> My, my two wedding gifts. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck the thing is. Blue and I don't know. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So, uh, so welcome back. Yeah. Uh, I won't say my good news, but you uh, poop cutter. What's going uh, on? I had my first clinical, <laughs> and <laughs> it was actually a ton of fun. Uh, you know, it was kind of a skilled nursing facility. Got to clean out a lot of nice bed sores and mm. do a lot of fun stuff. But... Mine. It was it, it, his clinical was actually at my apartment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mainly just wiping my asshole. Yeah, exactly. Over time. and over and over again. Yeah. I ate so much Mexican food in preparation. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. I did. Uh, you know, I did a lot of stuff. I gave a lot of medications to completely non-compliant patients. Which is great. I love giving. I just imagine you fucking throwing them down there, like into their mouth, like the video of the dog where it goes down his mouth and he coughs it straight back up. I, uh, there, I just loved throughout the day checking blood sugar and it getting higher and higher and higher and having to give more and more and more medication. Me. And then just, you know, then asking, so what you have today? And they're like, oh, I drink a lot of soda today. I'm like, how the fuck did you even get soda in here? This is a prison. <laughs> yeah, essentially. So yeah, we we had a fairly new admit, and they it was actually really interesting. Accidental overdose due to polypharmacy. So oh. when an older person just gets a bunch of different medications to deal with shit, you get unintended you know consequences and side effects and interactions. Yeah. So. Yeah, very interesting, and uh, she finally took a shit, and I had to cut it up with a tongue depressor and put it in a little a little jar because <laughs> oh, we were testing her for uh, C. diff. And I could, I can tell you, looking at that shit, they don't got no C. diff. It yeah. was solid. Was like <laughs> that was cutting a... through a well-done steak. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> the consistency. <laughs> like a very thick pudding. Oh, God, no thanks. Uh, a bread pudding. You know, thank God for people like you. Because Lord knows I would never do that. No, you're missing out. Nah. I mean, fuck. Who knows? Maybe at this point that will become my new job because I have submitted my resignation. You're no longer a fucking one percenter. A one percenter, you yep, bitch. I'm out. I did it. You finally did it. Now I can't yep. shit on you for being the bourgeois. I am. I am freed from the chains of a capitalism workplace. And hearing people throw around the words 12 million shares of blank. I don't have to hear that shit anymore. It's so fucking relief. I bet it's amazing. It's liberating. You're not going to have bitches telling you to stop moving tables because yeah, you're slightly I'm loud. I'm not going to have people telling me that I'm housekeeping Ooh. to my face. It's it, Honestly, it's I already feel... Mentally freed. Oh, God. I bet <laughs> your mental health is going to get uh, so dude, much I, better. I, I've already felt, like, just so much better about things. Which so. means podcast is going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at least on half of, like, one half of it. The yeah. other the other half has already been doing pretty well. Uh, I would this, say it's a, it's a solid decline. This half of the table decline. has been, been rough. The last six months. Nah, nah, it's been perfect. We put out yeah. our best shit. But it's been great. Uh, to new viewers, 
Oh, I was going to say that. Before welcome. I go into my, my last week, thank you all for being here. Yeah. You may have shown up from an ad or you came across us. It's good to have you. Surprisingly enough, we welcome you. And sorry for the cringe in the intro, but... <laughs> in season this one. Is, this is what to expect. No. If you go back, <laughs> every, listen, every if, if you are... Intro. Well, yeah, that too. But especially in season one... Oh. I am sorry for the intros oh on behalf God. of a D. Yeah. So I can't even, don't judge us. I think I've apologized weekly. I'm going to these. say if you're listening to this and you want to like get caught up with the back catalog, start, start in two. season two. Start with two. Go get caught up and Love, then do season yeah. one if you make it that far. S- start with two and once you you gain that love and understanding of who we are. Then go back and listen to the really <laughs> cringy shit in season yeah, one. And if you haven't listened to season one, that's okay. Uh, go listen to it. D used to do voices yeah, for eight great. episodes. <laughs> it's, it's great. D, yeah. You know, uh, I didn't realize how quickly we would run out of ideas. Yeah, how quickly I would just hit like a mental block when it came to voices and was like, okay, yeah. So, uh, and then also I'm, the realization of how terrible. So bad it is. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. How was your last week? I mean, I know you talked about yeah. your your clinical, but... I got my taxes back, and because Ooh, I was going to school wee. during COVID, I got a nice little what education. What cool one percenter is now. So... Exactly how much did you get back? Combined with my wife, or just split in half, my half? When you filed and you got your taxes oh, we, back... Oh, we combined our taxes. Then how much was the total? Okay, for me and my wife, it was... About $4,300. Ooh-wee! Guess how much I would have owed. <laughs> how much? Or gotten. If I didn't have this tax credit, huh. we probably would have gotten back like $1,300. <laughs> it's still so much more than mine. Well, I... But I, it's okay. So I, I set up my taxes so that I don't pay nearly as much throughout the year, and I... Anytime it's tax season, I have to pay so fucking much because of H&R Block and shit. I need to figure out how to do it on my own. Uh, you don't do it um, on your own? No, I haven't. But uh, I haven't filed yet. I still have like a dude, month just, and a half. Dude, okay. It's it's mainly because I, for some reason, I have no idea why, I had like a 401k withdrawal. Yeah, I don't know. You I, took a 401k withdrawal? No, not that I know of. Something happened. It's on my my tax form. I think I need to, like, look. Well, when you're I ready, know I okay. need to look more into. When it. you're ready to do your taxes, just come over. I will do your taxes for okay, you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can get you the free version of TurboTax. Okay. Based okay. on your income, I think. Um, I think. But I yeah, so I'm at forty one dollars for my return. Ooh. Yeah. Very good. Nothing like a nice forty one dollars to pay for. H and R block. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest. That's the way to do it. I taught you that. I told you that yeah, years yeah. ago. You need to. You're if you are getting a bunch of money back and it's not from like tax credits, you are giving the government an interest free loan mm-hmm. for a year. Yeah. And you know, one person that's not a huge deal, but you get a couple hundred million of us and all of you know, couple of bucks every single paycheck. All that money is just free use for the government. And don't get me wrong. Like, it is cool to get that, like... The like, lump. Fucking two years ago, I got, like, a like 1,500 return, and I was thrilled. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, now I'm just like, this is good. Yeah. I, I, I swear to God, that if way. that cat comes through... I don't see it being picked up. There's a okay. fucking stray cat outside yeah. the window. Kitty. That's its name. Its name is Kitty. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what else happened this last week? Okay. Thomas, I started some apple brandy, apple wine stuff. Just wanted to let you keep you up to date on my yeah. home brewing stuff. But I'm going to distill it and turn it into apple moonshine <laughs> because guess where my taxes went? <laughs> Uh, I, I may or may not have gone to a distill or, or a still. We're gonna have to fucking remove. Is that this called? Uh, is that called a plausible deniability? Does that no. work if I admit to plausible deniability? I mean, considering you're not connected to this at all, they'll just go to me. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I did that on purpose. I made sure all the finances come from you. Everything. Oh yeah. Oh goodness. But yeah, 
Oh, we went to an Asian market today and got a bunch of snacks. Yeah. And... We got a bunch of fucking everything. It's they had that great. that instant Korean coffee there, and it's cost half it as good. much as it is. I liked it on on Amazon, like literally half as much. <laughs> and this is my second cup. Hey, well, and I, I figured out the water ratio because I can't read Korean. I was gonna say mine did taste a little watered down. This one's it better. It was still good. It was it's still so really good. good. You know, it's instant coffee. It's the best. You know, yeah, you do what you can. About as good as you can get. So I have a uh, now nine ninety seven of those packets left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Okay. Well. So last thing, I've done a lot of auctioning this week, and I'm just gonna keep you up to date because I have fun with it. Let me go to my 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 purchases. I won some lav mics for two dollars. That's fun, fantastic. This one's more more pertinent to the podcast. I got a book called "This Is Not Vietnam. This Is Panama, a Latin American Country Invaded by the United <laughs> States of America: The Armed Intimidation and Provocation of the United States of America's Army Against Panama." So that's cool. Nice, <laughs> cool little book. It's about yeah. It's just about Panamanian psyops. Yeah. Uh, a knife that I that my father asked me to get for him. Hey, if you're listening to this, Venmo me sixty five dollars. It came out about fifteen dollars more expensive than I thought. I'll pay for shipping, but Venmo me sixty five bucks for it. <laughs> I almost got a Soviet Union flag. I almost got a medic flag from Vietnam. There was some awesome shit that I really There's wish I had. Cool a stuff, money. yeah. But the, I, it, it's got me feeling like I want to download it just to see some of the. It's shit fun that's on just there. to see. Like most of the time, you're not for me. The stuff that I'm looking for, the majority of the time, I don't find an auction with shit that I want to yeah. find. But every once in a while, once every couple of weeks, there's one that just is perfect. Okay. So it ticks all the boxes. I also I need to take an advance on the Patreon funds for next month from you. Oh, because. I won. Oh, those are the fucking the hats. World, two matching World War II chef hats. Jesus Christ! That we're gonna wear, and on the next episode, you're not gonna. There'll be no difference. Fucking eighty year old lice. Here we come, Hell baby. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got some some army chef hats <laughs> from <laughs> World War II, Christ. and they're matching. They're size seven and three quarters. I don't know what that means. So hopefully they fit our humongous it's, noggins. They're not. They're not gonna fit. They're gonna fit. They're gonna fit us like a yarmulke. Yeah, that's what we'll fashion them into. (laughs) Ah, good lord! The the authentic cooking yarmulke. (laughs) I like it. I'm down. Let me let me silence my phone now that I'm thinking about it. Otherwise, it's definitely gonna buzz. But that's my week. Not bad. Yeah. Other than Quentin, you do anything fun? No. Uh, nice. Just really struggled for like the two days that I worked this oh, I last bet. week. <laughs> oh man! So we are taking a trip. Luckily, not to the thirties, forties, or fifties. I'm week. sorry. Uh, we're going all the way back to 1839 to South Carolina. Carolina. A man by the name of Robert Smalls is born. Uh, he was born a man? Yeah. Did he have that Benjamin Button disease? He was born a man. Uh, no, he did not. So his mother had grown up working in the fields under a slave owner by the name of John McKee. And some people thought that John was Robert's father. Some people thought that it was John's son, Henry. Um, others even thought that it was the plantation manager, Patrick Smalls, which was kind of the focus that the McKee family put on all of it so that it, he wasn't seen as this like slave master, like sleeping with uh, one of his slaves and having their son. Right. Mm-hmm. God forbid. Um, so uh, everyone just called him Robert Smalls. And the reason people really thought that the McKee, like he was one of the McKees, um, is because he was treated so kindly by that family. Like the McKees were almost like oddly nice to Robert. Mm. So much so that 
Robert's mom insisted and would arrange for Robert to work in the fields. And she would say, like, you're going to go watch what's happening at the whipping post as as a young boy. Just because she was like, I don't want him thinking that, oh, slavery is just this fucking easy cruise through life. Uh, yeah. She was like, I want him to know the, the horrors of how bad this really is. Yeah, actually look yeah. at this shit. Now, as all of this went on it really started to radicalize Robert. And he he was regularly arrested and taken into the Beaufort Jail, Beaufort, South Carolina, where they were. Um, and it had gotten so bad that Robert's mother started to actually worry about his indignation. And she was, she was like, okay, well... <laughs> Maybe he's a little too angry about what's happening. So she reached out to John McKee and said, can you start renting him out, basically, um, hiring him out to different businesses just so that, like, he's not seeing what's going on on the plantation as heavily. Now, I didn't know that this was a thing. I had no idea that, like, they would lease out or do what was called hiring out slaves back in the uh 18 like 40s 50s now what it was is it was basically a way to lease people uh from one slave owner to another it's fucking awful uh well yeah and they basically turn that one worker into like a profit machine instead of them avoiding being able to pay or instead of them avoiding paying someone to work for the job. Now they were taking somebody that they owned that's not getting paid and they would get paid to give them to somebody else. It's fucking insane. Uh, so Smalls was kind of bouncing around all over, all over Beaufort for a little bit. Um, and then he ended up getting into like Charleston, South Carolina and he, and yeah, and <laughs> sorry, the <this laughs> South is fucking getting to me apparently. So he worked a lot on, uh, one of the, one of the ports over there and, uh, he, the man that he was working under was like, Hey, look. I'll let you keep one dollar of your earnings every week, which I'll pull up the. I will Dang, need this. That's I'll like, need this later. Yeah, that's actually a very uh, generous. Yeah. Offer for the time period. Seriously, must be. He must have been very well liked. I I think that he was. Um. So was he? Was he 18. educated? I, I would assume that I think his that, good treatment. I think that because of how – so that was like he gets to keep $28 a week basically, right? Or wait. Oh, it won't even do it because 1850 <laughs> doesn't fucking work. Damn it. Nice. But like, you know, I, I assume being kind of treated nicer, having different opportunities, he's going to see society and have experiences in society different than the average slave during the time period. Yeah. So he must have been able to like just get along better with the people he's working for, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah, so I think that because of his situation and because the McKees treated him so well, he was able to like he was he was an intelligent guy. Like it wasn't like Robert Mc or Jesus, Robert Smalls was like I I do think that he had some kind of education. Yeah. Um, because you'll learn later on in the episode, like he, he ends up being very fucking clever in the way that he's doing things. Uh, $1 a week is $36 today. Hey, 36 bucks a week. That's all you need. Especially when, you know, as long as you're not buying your avocado uh, toast, fucking, uh, you're fine. Purchased human. God fucking, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see, where were we? Uh, so, yeah, he gets to keep $1 per week, and he would mainly work in the harbor. Uh, oh, shit, I lost my place. But he took in all of the information he could. Um, and it, it's like 1858 at this point. He's been working in the harbor for 
fucking years. And uh, Harvard's a good place during that time period, yeah. too. That's oh, yeah. like that's like the social media of the 1800s. I mean, you also figure this is obviously whoa, obviously whoa. this is this is pre Civil War, and so the South is just like shipping Booming. shit out like crazy oh, and yeah. to work in like to work in a place that's as northern obviously south carolina isn't crazy southern it's not crazy northern but it is closer than working in like fucking new orleans where you've got to go around florida mm-hmm. so it's, you got to be motivated like, you're, to go to new yeah orleans. you're you're getting all of that trade supply through charleston and shipping everything out from there so he's seeing a lot of this go on, and he's just fucking taking everything in. Um, and in, like, 1856, 1857, around then, uh, he actually met a girl by the name of Hannah, who she was owned by the Kingman family. And she worked at a hotel in Charleston. And uh, Robert Robert was a fan, you know. Mm. He he saw Hannah and he he liked what he saw and she liked what she saw. So eventually they got permission to get an apartment together, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, for them to not be living on a plantation. Um, I mean he, the the owner must have just been making enough money. Oh, of course. That I think it's like. It's yeah, interesting because yeah, you, in you don't really think about that perspective. Like, I'm, they're not free people by any means. But, like, given just, like, an ounce there, here and there in these bigger areas, mm-hmm. it was, like, you never really think about that that aspect. Well, if you're, if you're thinking and about I mean, it, you know, in that perspective of investment, making money, which is the worst way to look at human it's beings. It's fucking terrible. But it's... To, to look at it along that line, those lines, okay, Robert works a lot or works basically exclusively yeah, you at keep, the docks. keep them happy. And, right? you know, let's see. Uh, I, I mean, this is truly horrible, but okay, they have a kid. I've got another slave. And it's so I don't bad. have to pay to shuttle this dude from my plantation down yeah. to the dock every day if he can just walk there from his apartment across the street that's an, and it, then he has a little bit of spending money so it's not like i'm going God, to dude. be spending for his living yeah it's he fucking, got it. it's that it's is it's so horrible awful. it is so horrible it's so bad and there's there's no and there's no good way to talk about it and there shouldn't be no not at all and there's so, there's no redeeming quality of any all. of anything that happened in the south um, well, anywhere there was slavery, yeah, 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 but especially truly. brutally in the South. God damn! So uh, uh, it's about states' rights. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> so, like I said, they get an apartment and they get married. They raise a small family. However, it wasn't like a fully recognized union, right? Yeah. Um, it's just they hold like a little ceremony and they're like, "Hey, we're married." And, mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's they do great. Their own thing, yeah, it's which great. Is, I mean, that's the important part. So, uh, Smalls works his ass off in the harbor, and he actually gets assigned to a ship called the CSS Planter. Now, this, it was a supply ship that it had been utilized previously quite a bit in Charleston. Um, and they would carry like certain other trades out with it. And as the Civil War began, it ended up shifting to delivering weapons because the the area where it was kind of stationed more or less was Fort Sumter, which is just a ton of like little islands that you would have, like they would bounce back and forth through. I mean, they would even take supplies as far as like down to New Orleans. Um, So Robert had been... He'd been working there for so long, he basically got promoted to a title called virtual pilot, right? Now, black people weren't allowed to hold rank in, like, 1800s America, like, up until the end of the Civil War. Uh, So, he's placed under the title wheelman. And he would actually get teased by his fellow shipmates his fellow seamen. <laughs> uh, and it, it went on for a while because he kind of looked like 
the the captain CJ Riley, like the way that he would carry himself, uh, the way that he would just like stand and and like walk and he was like, very his captainly. movements. Yeah, he was well, really captainly, but like their mannerisms were just very very similar because they had spent so much time together. Uh, so Riley was actually known for wearing this big straw hat. And when they would go past these ports, he would just stand with his arms folded while the ship would pass. And he would do like the little signals and shit in a very distinct manner. So much so that when they would pass and he would drop signals, everyone knew that that was Riley. Yeah, they were like, oh, like they basically were so comfortable. Yeah, they were like, they oh. wouldn't even really check the signals. Yeah. It was just like the CSS oh, planter with Riley. This is, here this they, is here they, obviously they him. Like. Who else could it possibly be? Yeah. It was really cool. Um, so to ensure that all was well during these supply runs, uh, at certain times, the planter would have to, like, signal. So they would, they would like, do a certain, like, length of whistle or, like, beep, beep, or, like, and their flags fucking, or yeah, lights flags or, whole bunch or of like, stuff. certain horns. Or, like I said, they would give certain gestures. Or, really, like I like fucking Riley would just stand up there with his arms crossed and they'd be like, oh, well, all is well. Old dipshit Riley. Dipshit Riley's dead at the front of the helm. Now, on the night of May 12th, the planter had just finished this big supply run. I mean, they had gone up to one of the, one of the ports that had, they were planning on disassembling just because it was old. It wasn't getting a lot of action. And they had loaded up a bunch of the guns and weapons from that area, tossed them on the planter, brought, like, a ton of shit back to uh, to Charleston. Uh, and they got into port a little bit after fucking midnight. Like, this is a late, late yeah, run. Yeah, it's a late run. Now, because they got back so late, Riley and his, like, two or three officers that were on board decided hey we're just gonna hop off board for the night and it it's tough because it wasn't standard for ports in during the civil war uh it wasn't standard for confederate ships in the civil war i should say to leave slaves aboard and say hey stay here for the night finish up do your shit and then go home we're gonna dip out early it was however regular for the planter because Riley had worked with these these men so frequently, he was basically like, "Oh yeah, like I know that I know that the men that are like the slaves that I have on ship are still going to be working and they're going to do what they need to do. They know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I they've done it time and time again. Yeah, he goes, I trust. I'm going to go get a drink. Yeah, I'm going to go home and fucking beat the shit out of my wife because I'm a Confederate piece of shit. Perfect. So it was pretty common for for Riley and his officers to do this however the confederate ideology was that if you left a group of slaves in charge of the ship it was enough for a court martial this was big big time no no shit well yeah because if it's just a slave or a ship full of slaves then they're almost people <laughs> jesus christ yeah uh, and I mean, he he did trust these guys not to say anything to anybody about it, he, probably because he was so violent towards them. If he they knew that they, he would be violent towards them if he said anything, yeah, or if they said anything. Um, now, the planter had two hundred rounds of ammunition on it, a thirty-two pound pivot gun, a twenty-four pound howitzer. Which, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's basically the mini gun of. The How many pounds? Civil War. 24. 24 pounds. Like, that's the crank. No, I don't think that's the crank. Uh, Civil War. Okay. Oh, it's like a Gauss cannon. It's it's a big-ass cannon. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a howitzer. I mean, you know, when you look at, when you think of a howitzer, a modern howitzer, how it's kind of like an artillery gun, yeah. it's the same thing but in cannon form. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there were four guns, one of which had been pretty heavily damaged, but still functioned. Now, a little bit 
after 2 a.m., um, a lot of the slaves that were leaving the ship were seen heading back to their homes. A couple would have, like, their wives meet them at port, and they would escort their wives home. So they see, like, if you were watching the ship up until it was completely empty, everyone heads off the ship, slaves go home, go about their night. But just before 2 a.m., Robert Smalls got his fellow slaves together, and he said, I've hatched a plan over the last few days, the last few weeks, really. We're going to take the planter, the CS CSS planter. We're going to navigate through all of the waters of Fort Sumter, and we're going to escape through the north using any and all guns that are aboard this ship. Hell yeah. And all but two of the slaves agree. Everybody, like, basically everybody but these two are like, this is fucking worth it. Like, we're either going to get free or we're going to die trying. So, and if anyone's going to do it, it's Robert Smalls. So, they get everything ready and Smalls says, look, we can't stay on this ship all night. Like, we can't stay on it for much longer or else. Because, I mean, they're right outside a general's house. Yeah. Um, the general's fucking quarters in his home overlook where the planter ports every single night so they go we need to get everybody off the boat the boat and just as you get off of the harbor sneak just sneak right around the corner and sit and lay low for just a little bit at these other boats that are close by right so uh after this, Smalls goes into Riley's cabin, and he puts on the famous straw hat. He puts on the captain uniform, and they kind of get everything, like, snuck back onto the ship. They're climbing back up. They get in. They fire up the ship, and they take off. Now... They have one stop to make, and they've raised the South Carolina flag. They raised the Confederate flag. Do they, at this point, do they, like, go and get their wives or their families, or are they just, let's get out? So, they have one, one uh, place to stop beforehand. It's at the West, West Atlantic Wharf, so it's just, just up the way a little bit. It's like a fucking, I think, 10-mile reroute, basically. Mm -hmm. So, they pop over here, and uh, they pick up... Four women, three men, and a handful of kids. Um, in addition to Riley's wife and two children. Now, Robert had approached his wife's owner a couple months previously, Kingman. Uh, and he said, look, I want to make our marriage and our family official. And I don't want to keep being a slave to, to these fucking terrible white men. What's it going to cost me to, to make that happen? Like, I want to buy my wife and kids from you. And Kingman tells him it's going to cost you $800 to buy all three of them. Okay, okay, $800. Oh, I, I already have it. It's no. Oh, do you want me to say it or are you looking at it? No, up? no, I'm, I'm doing something else. So you say what you're saying. So it's t basically... Almost $30,000 to buy these three people, which is just insane considering... In 800 weeks if he spends zero money, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he had a hundred, he had $100 saved up. So he's got like like 35, 3600 bucks, right? Yeah, he got some dosh. Yeah, but to get $30,000 when you're only making $36 a week, like, come on, man. Yeah, that's insane. So... He he's just kind of torn at this point. And this is, like I said, a couple months before, he's just like, how the fuck am I ever going to get 700 more dollars to get to get my family to finally yeah. be mine? Even though you shouldn't have to fucking buy your family. <laughs> like, yeah. God, like... Damn. So. Because of this, I think it further radicalized and kind of planted that seed 
more so than I, than Robert already had thought, like, hey, I want to escape to the north. Now he's like, okay, I'm going to set a fucking hmm. plan in yeah. motion. It's like, now I have to. Yeah, I don't now, have the like, option. Now I need to get the fuck out of here with my family. So they stop at the West Atlantic Wharf. Families hop on board and away they go. They pass first Fort Johnson and they blow the whistle. Beep, beep. And from the shore, it looks like Riley's at the helm. Because mm-hmm. Smalls stands with his arms crossed, hat on his head, in the captain's uniform. But it's like 3.45 in the morning. So the light of dawn is still well under the horizon. And Robert looks just like almost it's almost uncanny how much Robert looks like Riley at this point. It's so dark, you can't see anything, but you you do recognize, oh, that's Riley. That's a fucking CSS planter. They got their flags up. They did the whistle. Good to go. So Smalls has been doing this for years, and he knows every single thing to do to pass through these harbors in the dead of night. And and to remind you, this is wartime. Like, yeah. These are complex specifically set up that if you don't know exactly what you're doing you're a spy yeah, and you're you get done. shot yeah like this is this is intense this is when the the han zimmer music <laughs> yeah right zimmer zimmerman han zimmer zimmer okay yeah. the han zimmer music is just like i don't know what i what yeah, that's it, from yeah, but yeah. It's hans, hans okay zimmer. i don't know why i a couple, a couple of the Inception. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that bass, really low bassy thing that's in like Hereditary. <laughs> really. The, <laughs> the Midsummer soundtrack starts playing. God, no kidding. Uh, so because the CSS Planter was so well known among everyone, uh, it was kind of considered like the guard boat, and it was supposed to just pass through everything without interruption. If any if any ship was supposed to just continue on its way, everyone yields to the CSS planter because of what it's constantly carrying on board. So they take this to their advantage. I mean, they're just cruising through, popping out signals left and right. And I mean, once they get out of the range of the guns, they fucking like Fort Sumter notices that they don't head over towards the next fort. What's happening is the CSS planter is heading straight to the Union's blockade, which they had struggled for a while with this. The Union was right on the border of where they have everything. Like, there was no way to get in. The Union would block anything trying to go further north. And the CSS planter passes just out of range from where they can be shot at alarms go off everyone's like what the fuck is the planter doing but on the other side of things the union sees this fucking confederate confederate ship ship just coming towards charging them (laughs) so someone says hey get your guns ready blast these assholes they're headed our way now on the planter uh, Smalls had arranged with his wife to bring a white sheet that she would have rolled up. They switched the flags, pop the white sheet up, and the Union sees, oh, they're surrendering. We're good. They can't find the white sheet anywhere. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so they're struggling. They're like, what the fuck do we do? They left it on their they've, kitchen counter. Yeah, they've, they've pulled down the two flags they're flying they're sailing with no flag at this point and the union's like what the fuck is going on so as gun number three is raised putting them right in their sights the guy goes wait a second i think i see a white flag and they look really close and they're like is that a white flag what the fuck is that thing and it was basically a piece of fabric that smalls and the crew had gotten a bunch of soap and lathered the fuck out of the thing with soap and water to make it look as white as possible, hoisted that thing up, and they see it and they go, wait, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. Like, 
it looks white. Like it's like four in the morning at this point. Yeah, it's like it's white, but there's this is weird. Yeah, something's Some odd. Weird shadows on this. So bitch. they telescope in, and they're like, "All right, like where's the captain? Like what the fuck is going on?" And they're looking for white faces. They're looking for any Confederate soldiers that might be just fucking hiding with a gun. They aren't seeing any any white men on the ship, and they're like. What the what the fuck is going on? So they say, don't fire. Don't don't shoot anything yet. We'll let them get here. And when they get here, we'll fucking handle it. And if we need to blow them up in port, blow them up, blow them up in port. Now, the CSS planner gets into port and they find out that this ship has been fucking stolen from Fort Sumter reclaimed and the best mutiny has ever fucking happened and it still had the supplies on it all of the supplies however even better is that the code book containing all of the signals for confederate ports because of how much the planter moved through ports and everywhere the fucking union now has every single signal that the Confederates use everywhere. Yeah, they can now wise. just infiltrate on top spies, of that. Spies, troops, steal supplies. Yeah. It's, they, it's, it's, it's like getting the, the key to the city yeah. of the port. You got the it's fucking crazy. skeleton key, man. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, the book has a map of all fucking locations of torpedoes and mines. Yeah, the underwater in the mines. In Charleston Harbor. Like, so the union's like, oh, my God. And they're they're They consider everyone that gets off of the planter. They call them all very intelligent contraband. And they're so (laughs) impressed with how well this has been carried out. Uh, One of the flagmen, which is basically like the port general, more or less. uh he says, Robert Smalls is superior to any who have come into our lines, intelligent as any of them have been. Uh, so all this goes through. He drops off all these guns. He delivers a, like two fucking fat cannons and tons of ammunition and the most valuable naval intel yeah, that that's, the Union that's could always ever the thing receive. Is, intel is so powerful. So... A private bill is passed within just like a a week or two, and it gives gives Smalls and the crew half of the proceeds of the value of the planter, right? So Smalls himself gets $1,500, and it's enough money that he... After the war is over in like 1860, I think it's like May, April... May 1865, Robert Smalls buys the McKee plantation (laughs) and he purchases his home where he was born. Now, during the Civil War, Robert actually lobbied for enlisting black soldiers for the Union Army for like from the time he he became a free man for the next few months. It's believed that he recruited almost 5,000 black soldiers just by himself. Yeah. Uh, He took lead of the planter at one point. They put him on it while they were raiding Fort Sumter. And the white captain just lost his shit and ran down to the coal bunker. And uh, Small stepped up and said, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. Just takes complete control of the planter destroys Sumter, fucking handles it effortlessly, and uh, he was actually promoted to captain, and he began earning $150 a month at that point. Hell yeah. He became the highest paid black soldier of the Civil War, and he served in a total of 17 different battles. Uh, When the war was announced as one in 1865... Robert was actually aboard the planter in Charleston Harbor, which is just... I love it. Sweet fucking justice. Like, it's oh, just yeah. like... Could you imagine 
like what he must have been feeling yeah. through all of these successes. And, and he's just he's on board. The irony. He's on board his like just chef's kiss heist. Mm-hmm. And he's well, uh, not on, not only that, but the fact that he yeah, and now, worked his yeah. way back to being captain of the ship that he stole yeah. originally. He's like, captain of the ship that oh he stole, God. and he's aboard that ship in the harbor he was he enslaved stole it from. In, that that he was enslaved in, mm-hmm. miles away, from, like just a few miles away from where he was born. It's announced the war is fucking over, and so he takes his money and he. Buys the plantation, buys his home, <laughs> which is so ironic that Just he bought the fucking, plantation. I love it. Back dude. from it, it's amazing. It's this so dude is great. a badass. So, after the war, Robert served five non-consecutive terms in the uh, U.S. House of Representatives for South Carolina. Now, it's weird because he serves for like four years in the fifth district, and then the fifth district gets shifted into the seventh district, and then. Like a few years go by and it's shifted into a different district. So his non consecutive terms are all consecutive years, pretty much. It's just because it was being changed districts. <laughs> um, and he actually started a, a shop in Beaufort that he worked alongside basically like an entrepreneur from Philadelphia. And one of the Yanks, yeah, right? They would serve the needs of free men until it was announced that black people would gain citizenship. Um, and he died in his home in Beaufort in February 22nd, 1915, the same place he was born. And that home is now a national landmark. Uh, Hell yeah, better they, be. I I don't know if they have it, but it's been proposed that uh, Robert Smalls has a, a statue of him built in the uh, fucking state capitol in South Carolina just because of, like, how fucking monumental he was to the Civil War, to turning the tides. Oh, yeah. Like... Yeah, they, it was a massive hit when they lost that ship. Yeah. Oh, big time. So, yeah, Robert fucking Smalls, man. Amazing. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I This one's been on my list to do, so I'm glad you yeah. you did it. You pulled the, the trigger. I fucking did. Uh, it was a fun one, man, and, and I eat that, like, 1850s shit up. I, I love, like, mid- to like late 1800s i think they're so like that pre-industrial age is just so fucking cool to me or is yeah. that pre-industrial is that just no no that's post-industrial industrial was the 1700s oh so yeah post-industrial age i think it's so fucking wild yeah and it's it's so difficult to when you're thinking about history so let's say you're like uh, right now, let's think. Think of the past. Think about when Vietnam happened. Mm-hmm. About fifty years. Mm-hmm. Now think about a soldier in the trenches of World War One. Now be in that state and think about something as long ago as Vietnam, and you're talking about the Civil War. That's a good point. Like they probably and no, they they did. They had you know the older people, the old vets. That's that you see on the point. street during World War One were Viet or Vietnam, goddamn, were Civil War veterans. Jesus like, Christ! It's so difficult to put that into perspective. To process that it's like within that close eighty together. years of each other, easily, and just within the end of World War One to the beginning of the Civil War. Just within a hundred years, you have, you know, God, you have muskets and cannons to gas chambers at Auschwitz. That's a good point. That's two generations? Yeah. Good Lord. You know, if you were born and a child, let's say 10 years old, during the Civil War, you were very likely an older, they're called older adults in the nursing industry. You know, you were an old person. (laughs) (laughs) An old ass. You were an old ass, but you were still alive during World War II. Yeah. So you got to see both. 
That's crazy. And World War shit. One, and with and all World the wars War in one. in the uh, Caribbean and South America Jesus. by the United States. That shit's crazy to fathom. Yeah, and like it, it's crazy how far time is, but also not. Yeah, really though. Because if you think about the Vietnam War and how that looked, and then you go to uh, World War Two, that's only twenty years. That's a good point, yeah. Like, you very well, you were 20 during World War II. You're going to be 40, 40 in Vietnam. Vietnam. Jesus Christ, You're going to be, man. oh, what was it? You know, you're very well likely going to be, you know, fighting in World War II, fighting in Korea, and even potentially fighting in Vietnam. God damn. That's it's so like wild it's so weird about. to think about time in how, that way. How often that shit was happening during yeah, that time? Because we 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 frame our history as this like, okay, well it's in the centuries, so yeah, the, the things that happened in eighteen ninety nine are decades away from the things that happened in nineteen oh one, and you know the fall of the Soviet Union. That's a good point. In the yeah. you know mid nineties, <laughs> wasn't that long ago? Yeah. To today. Today, yeah, thirty years. Not even that's that. that's nothing yeah so because we we think of history as these just these big events yeah with periods of nothingness in between but really it was just when really it's just boom 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 something happens something, yeah. happens something happens something happens and it's just something finishes five years pass something big happens mm -hmm. happens for five years five years pass after it's ended something big happens again yeah it's so wild to think about yeah it's crazy but good perspective I, mean, Ugh, I didn't it's really weird. it's weird to think that those these two fucking like the the discourse of america split between the top and bottom half happened 80 years before that discourse of the fucking planet against germany and italy and japan it's like yeah what the like fuck? 60 70 years yeah 70 years it's crazy, it's crazy. shit like that that is it that's all yeah. it took so you get you know you're a young adult in the civil war you're very well going to still be alive potentially in world war 2 you're going to be old as shit yeah but could be could still be alive to to witness that and see God that damn. crazy shit all right well you got patrons. oh yeah we should probably let let these fine folk go yeah <laughs> so that we don't just keep rambling yeah our, our fucking 30 more minutes of discussing time <laughs> timelines <laughs> all right so patreon.com forward slash points o pressure sorry i kind of tilted my head away from the microphone i'll fix it so thank you guys you guys let us keep the lights on keep upgrading our our software Amazing. bringing fun content hopefully to you guys so if you're if you're interested and want to help us out go ahead and check it out so chairperson of the pp mini d donnell Thank you so much, Abby. Big thank you. AJ's third nut, Lindo, D's nuts. Not me. Nordic Thunder, Toddle Waddle, Dark Runner, Haley, and Casey McFacey. Thank you guys so much for letting us keep God, doing really this and don't. providing, hopefully, some education. What does Abby say? I hope I we at some point you exhaled slightly out of your nose at some of our attempts yeah. at jokes. <laughs> God, really though. Uh, well, as usual, find us on Instagram and Twitter at Points O Pressure. Reach out with any shows like TV show suggestions, books, movies, music, or if you just need somebody to talk to, by all means, reach out and we will catch you guys next week. Thanks again.